Vosh is a streamer best known for being heavily involved in political discourse throughout the internet. He's very well known in those circles online. And given the type of stuff he talks about, there's always going to be a handful of controversial clips out there about the guy floating around. However, today we'll be taking a look beyond the politics of Vosh, as there's another type of controversy this man has gotten himself into, one that is really disgusting to learn about. Shout out to the channel members like always, and if you'd like to support yourself, you can check out my Patreon in the corner or YouTube memberships by clicking the join button. Now let's not waste any time and get right into everything and see what exactly is going on with our friend Vosh here. Before we get into that however, we must first go over the sponsor of today's video, Scentburn. Now let me ask you, how do you normally go about your morning routine? For me, I wake up, take a shower, brush my teeth, all the normal stuff that everyone does. However, if I'm going to someplace fancy, I want to look nice. And part of looking nice is finding the best cologne to pair up with. Luckily for me, Scentbirds got my back, as they're a fragrance subscription service that lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $17. They have over 700 organic perfumes and colognes to choose from, including a multitude of unisex products to keep your options fresh and varied. These designer brands range from the classics like Gucci, Versace, and Burberry, but they also have a selection of indie labels such as DS and Durga and Amoj if you want to get adventurous with your options. Each fragrance comes with a bag to keep the vials safe, and even a magnetic case for an extra layer of protection. I got myself Zier Econ Ode, Roja Elysium Owl Intense, and Versace Arrows Flame, with each of them having their own unique scents going on. The Zier Econ had a more sporty and outdoors vibe to it, whereas the Roja had a more straightforward fresh and clean one, and the Versace had floral notes attached alongside a general freshness going on, with each of them lasting around 4 hours in my time using them. Experimentation is important with all these options available, so make sure to try as many different fragrances as you need to find the perfect one that suits your style and personality. You can do so by using my coupon code LANZA below for 55% off your subscription order, coming out to just over $7 for your first month. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video, and again, make sure to use code LANZA to get in on this great deal as soon as you can. Vosh's first controversy was back when he was caught harassing someone named Poppy back in 2017 when he was known under the name Irish Laddie. While that situation is its own story and he did end up admitting fault, during a Destiny stream he would go over DMs that were initially redacted between two people in this community. It turns out that these people were Vosh who was the black user and someone named Pastel in the red, another person who got caught up in a Poppy situation. The most notable screenshot between the two show him admitting that he found the concept of bestiality very hot to him and explained in detail involving his lust for horses. This is extremely disgusting to see, and so given the recent situation going on, I decided to see just how far back this infatuation with horses and a certain body part goes. Vosh's interest in horses goes as far back as 2010 when he was a 16 year old teenager, as he was seen in a forum talking about how many horses someone would interact with if they made 200k each. In 2012 he would be seen in a reddit AMA asking someone who participates in bestiality how does a horse exactly have the human. Later that same day in a different thread about necrophiliac, he would ask if they would do anything with the horse and they would reply as such below, with Vosh approving one of his answers. Back in 2017, Vosh would be seen talking about his pet gecko saying some stuff that's really hard to tell if it's a joke or not, which given all the horse stuff we've seen, it leaves a really weird taste in your mouth. Some more leaks from that year would come out showing Vosh stating that bestiality isn't that serious of a crime or even animal abuse to him before going on to say that since animals can't give consent that it shouldn't be a relevant talking point and that it shouldn't be considered a crime at all. Vosh would continue to streak by asking someone what the issue with drawn images like that are, even saying some more stuff about horses and how good it would feel to drink them in explicit detail. More and more of these weird posts involving horses will go on into 2019, and he would again state that bestiality should probably be legal just a few weeks before the poppy and pastel leaks would come out. Now all these posts about bestiality and horse cock are extremely weird to see. While some people will try to defend it as Vosh just being weird or poor jokes taken out of context, that message he sent to Pastel always comes back to mind. Vosh at one point in time wasn't against bestiality and seemed to be personally interested in it, so while the horse stuff at first might have been seen as just a joke, it looks like Vosh is actually projecting his fantasy of wanting to get busy with one, going on to say in a joking manner to try and hide his true intentions. Now it wasn't just this horse stuff that Vosh was caught saying, as there was another controversial nature of his that would get a lot more prevalent throughout his online career. He has gone on record making a handful of really strange jokes involving his take on Lolly and other people as well jumping in on it, before going on to say months later that the age consent represents numerous power imbalances, but that if they are readdressed through socialist reform, it should be lowered in the process in his opinion. He would then go on to joke about doing a child of a capitalist family because of course he would, and when someone would mention how they know people who are watching child abuse material, he would make yet another really strange joke about whether CP was ethical or not, whatever that means. 
Vosh would be seen joking about posting CP in the chat he was in, and would ask him when someone has done the deed with a minor as an adult. Someone would reply saying that when they were a minor they did an adult as Vosh replied saying that was hot. He would also talk about Shadman, a known lolicon artist, and say that he has mixed opinions on him because he values his political commentary, going on to make reference to one of his comics that he made. Vosh would say some more odd things like joking about child spots as some people believe should have access to that in order to curb their urges. He would then make more very weird jokes involving these robots and saying that he would draw the act of it, before going on to say that he won't draw it after all as the bad joke didn't hit the crowd the way he intended it to. He would even make another comment about wanting to see someone debate against the robots, which in turn implies that he advocates for the implementation of them in real life. There'd be a handful of more really weird statements and jokes involving CP and Lolly. At one point with him even interested in talking about how in pre-colonial Hawaii they have no evidence of child abuse despite a history of doing children. But this post from 2019 can sum up his thoughts on that pretty easily right here on screen for you to see. Vosh was also not only seen posting all these weird takes on Discord, he was also known for being the owner of the Twitter account Walkinide. This account was known for liking suspect looking pictures, one which included a young looking girl with the face blacked out for the reason being a mess that I can't explain on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure you guys can put two and two together on this one. Now there's a couple more screenshots of Vosh saying all this weird stuff, but as his online career grew he decided to take this into a more mainstream direction, as there are a multitude of clips of him saying a bunch of this stuff on stream. It's pretty insane to listen to, so the best way to go about it would be to go through the more brash ones to understand this guy and his fascination with this subject matter. What if CP is free? If you're not paying for child pornography, then there is no argument in favor of morally condemning people who get it. Uh, super chats. I would not say that it is uh, unethical for a person to purchase child and the moral hypocrisy that we perpetuate when we condemn people for for participating in industries that are really icky like cp but then we just you know like oh whatever it's the rest of the industry that that really strikes me the wrong way to me this strikes this strikes to me as some lib shit this is um this is a tacit endorsement of, or at the very least, permission given to, um, the exploitative nature of capitalist industry. When we apply this hypercritical um, moral condemnation to people who uh, contribute to certain industries, but then the rest of it we just give free f***ing pass to. It's really f***ing gross to me. It's like actually disgusting. So would you say the people who purchase child are just as bad as the people who sell it or no? <laughs> No, not not even slightly. I don't think that you should morally impugn anyone who purchases child for the same reason I wouldn't want to be morally impugned for buying clothing from companies that like use slave labor to do so. However, those who produce and sell the child, that is an entirely different question. If you're stopping people who have bought child, you probably have some information in on the system which is producing it. In practice, that's just not how you make the world a better place. Like what? Oh, you have child on your computer well well did you pay for it or or did you get it for free and then like oh I, you paid for it well to jail with you like okay if if you're not paying for child if you're just getting it there there is no moral or legal argument against that that doesn't that doesn't also like rope in you guys for the things that you have purchased i would never um make the argument that somebody who doesn't pay for child consumes in any way has committed an immoral act we've all jerked it to lolly at some point or another we have at some point in our lives been going crazy on some hentai site and we've been stro <laughs> stroking as hard and fast as we can and then after we nut we go back look over our history chat and we go like oh geez oh boy some of these girls looked pretty young okay i don't give a f that last clip was especially interesting, as Vosh tries to normalize and project his own personal actions and dumb it down as, oh, everyone's done it before, when in reality most people have indeed not done that before. What Vosh is saying here is that he found himself in a situation like that, and instead of realizing that what he got himself into was extremely wrong and disgusting, he instead dumbs it down to dissuade himself from looking any further into his own actions. It's not normal for someone to look back at their images and think to themselves, oh man, do they look young. That shows that you have a big issue going on and need to make the proper changes in your life instead of brushing it off and pretending it's not a big deal. Now there are two more clips that I decided to save to discuss together piece by piece, as these are perhaps the most infamous clips of Vosh out there. The first one would be where Vosh defends the possession of CP because since people buy products that are made using the abuse of child slaves and CP is made abusing children, they should be on the same level of immoral and not one over the other. In fact, and this is going to be a real hot take, I have yet to hear a convincing moral or legal argument as to why possession of child should be illegal. Actual child 
Now, to clarify on this take, we do not, in this country, um, typically uh, uh, criminalize people who have procured me uh, media or resources which were the product of abuse. Um, it is not illegal to own necklaces that have um, slave diamonds or whatever. What are they called? Um, or, or yeah, blood diamonds. Yeah, all of our clothes produced by sweatshops, our computers with silicon and lithium mined from literal slaves in our society we have already deemed that people are not responsible for the mechanisms by which the media they consume and the content they uh, engage with are produced it does, no, no 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 all you're about to make some really dumb arguments because you encourage the production of porn yeah and you encourage the slave mining that goes into uh, blood diamonds when you buy the necklaces you incur you encourage the mining of and, and, the, and the slaves that mine the lithium when you purchase electronics okay there is it is the same thing don't come at me with your dumb feels arguments okay if you feel you have a cogent argument levy it my way but i'm not interested in listening to your feels on the issue. Vosh, bro, you're gonna need a pause. Whoop, look who just got banned. Oh, look who gets banned for saying stupid shit in my channel. I don't tolerate that shit here. No, nope. ooh, brah, ooh, brah, you have a point that I can't really argue against, but brah, you should take a pause, brah. Ooh, ooh, brah, yikes, brah. Don't like that, brah. Ooh, brah. Ooh, bad, bad look, brah. Yeah, big oof, brah. Beefy, bad. Feelings hurt. Thank you, Anarchotac. I'm objectively right on this. They're, they're morally identical. The difference being, of course, that there are far more people caught up in the slave labor and exploitation of the developing world than there are children. So if anything, owning child is probably a hell of a lot more ethical than wearing the t-shirts on your backs right now. You like that argument? Ooh, you like that? You like that moral culpability? You're all worse than CP owners, and I am too. Do you like that? No ethical consumption under capitalism. Shit sucks, right? But if we accept that argument for slave labor, then we definitely have to accept it for child None of it is- Yeah, I agree. None of it is ethical. But we've already made this social decision that people are not responsible for the systems by which the stuff they own is produced. We've already made that decision. You're right, but you're kind of revealing your power level. No, this is exactly what I'm- This is exactly what I mean. I'm right, but I'm revealing my- no power level because I'm right? No, this is a moral inconsistency in society. The answer should be that all of these things are bad. Now, I have never seen this clip before making this video, and I have never heard someone equate necklaces and t-shirts made by child slave labor to making CP material. While yes, it's unfortunate that some of the stuff we own are indeed made using cheap, underpaid, and sometimes slave labor involving children from other countries, they are not on the same level as the production and possession of CP. What Vosh is trying to do is equate them because they both involve the abuse of children, However, he fails to understand that one is on a whole other level of bad compared to the other. Oh, you know that necklace you're wearing right now? Yeah, kids were abused in Africa to get that diamond on it and that's bad. Oh, you don't like the possession of CP? Well, why do you own a necklace that was made using child slave labor then? That was made abusing children as well. The production and possession of CP is inarguably worse than the production of a t-shirt or necklace, as one is clearly much more gross, disturbing, and disgusting compared to the other. The next one would be where he says that he believes it's possible for a child and adult to have a healthy relationship in his opinion. It is possible. Please, uh, please, right now, uncuck your dumb shit lip cuck SJW brains and recognize this empirically correct fact that I am about to spit. It is possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship and for it to have positive outcomes on the child as well. That is possible. Now that's a pretty spicy clip indeed, and a lot of people use it to show him supporting these kinds of relationships to exist. However, the rest of the clip helps understand the point he was trying to make. However, categorically, we discourage those relationships because as a rule, it is substantially more likely that enabling them would cause harm in society. That's the difference between act and rule utilitarianism. An act utilitarian would say, oh, this is an instance where it was good for the adult and the minor to have a that would make it a good action. But the rule utilitarian, which is what I am, would say, even though that individual outcome was good, the act was still bad because in general, in a broader application for adults and children to have sex with one another leads to horribly destructive outcomes. For that reason, it is an unethical act. I literally just explained the opposite of what you just said. That no, just because on the off chance it might help someone, you shouldn't categorically support one action because I am a rule utilitarian. Now, as you can see, Vash is still against the relationship of a child and adult. However, he still stated that he believes it's possible for a positive relationship between one another to happen in society. This is extremely gross of him to say and believe in. Given all those discourse screenshots we've seen of him discussing this kind of rhetoric, it only makes him look even worse than before, as it's pretty obvious that what he's saying is something that he seriously believes in, and not something that could just be written off as a poor joke. Now all this stuff we've seen about Vosh, to put it simply, is extremely disturbing to listen to. He has multiple clips out there of him defending child crimes in some way, shape, or form, 
and the multiple Discord messages mentioning his affection for horses and his pet gecko, while maybe one or two or even three out of context screenshots would have been funny to meme on, I've shown y'all well over 10 plus of these, and I've kept a couple extra out of the video because it was becoming redundant as y'all got the point already. I genuinely have no idea how this never hit the wider public any sooner. The best I could assume is that he and his audience would just say it was weird jokes or everything was taken out of context so that nobody would dig any further. Of course, you can see the video isn't over yet, as these past statements will come back to haunt him in due time, bringing in a brand new allegation into the mix because of course that would happen. On February 7th, 2024, Vosh was streaming and he would accidentally open up a folder called To Be Sorted, a folder that contained multiple NSFW images in them. What? Now most of the images seen are just your typical not safe for work stuff that doesn't warrant any investigation beyond cracking a few jokes about them. However, there were three images that were extremely suspect looking to me, and people online will look into them and find out there was a lot more going on here than just simple NSFW artworks. The first image would be this one right here. One where an AI generated drawing of a horse sticking an object that you can piece together in your head into a bucket of what appears to be what you think it is with two anime girls right up on it. The second image contains all that as well, only this time an adult looking woman is below the horse doing what is being implied to her, and a suspiciously young looking girl is behind the horse engaging in what I can only describe as eating a chocolate donut. Now this isn't your typical tame NSFW furry artworks where it's an anthropomorphic animal drawing that looks human. This is representing a real life horse and two real life women messing with it in that nature, and the fact that the second image has a girl that looks young doesn't help either. These two images are what you would call drawn bestiality artwork, given that Vosh has years worth of messages stating that he finds it hot, it's not exactly shocking that this was found on his computer. The third image however is the worst. As in this image, there are two clearly underage looking girls engaging in acts with an adult male that are very obvious in nature. Some poor anonymous soul online will end up finding the full piece in question, and in the list of tags is Lolly. Suddenly those old debates of him downplaying and defending anything having to do with child exploitation was seen in a much different light. As while some people thought it was just him being provocative back in the day, now knowing that he consumes this kind of content, it puts everything in a much darker context now. The same is said for the horse pictures. All those old out of context messages of him lusting for horses was seen as him just being a little weird and nothing more, but now that was being put in a different context as well. This wasn't just a small little mistake of showing a couple kinky furry images on Vosh's end. This was by all means some of the most degenerate stuff he could find on someone on the internet. These leaks brought everything from his story past back to the eyes of many, and suddenly a lot of people who weren't fully aware of him such as myself at the time were now learning of him thanks to this news going viral online through multiple different sources, such as the Drama Alert Twitter account for example getting over 14 million views on just their tweet alone. The story was growing at a massive rate, and what happened next only proved the virality of the subject wasn't slowing down anytime soon. This news had hit the likes of Ethan and Hila Klein, the host of the H3 podcast, a podcast with just under 3 million subscribers on YouTube alone. They would do a little under a 2 hour coverage on the new leaks and looking into his past that we've seen already, obviously disgusted by what they've seen. While it's not worth digging into given we discussed it already, what is worth digging into is Vosh's response stream that he did right after their podcast, as he would come out and say that he wants to become a horse and do women like that. I'll make it clear, you can write this down, I want to fuck a woman as a horse. None of this is a secret, I just, to be clear, you know, many jokes have been made about this, but I stand by it. My moral principles are rock solid. I'm, I'm, my feet are firmly planted in the ground. I've got my boots up, they're planted firmly. You, you cannot move me from my position. This isn't a secret. This is already pretty insane to listen to, and it only gets more insane. As his defense for the third image we saw earlier was that he thought the girls were short stacked thick and looked like goblins and didn't realize they were children until he was told so. The other one um, is like a threesome with two chicks and a guy. And in retrospect, looking at it, knowing now that that artist is a lolicon, yeah, I can see it. When I looked at it, I think the vibe that I got was like short stack thick kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, like the way uh, like goblins get drawn in. You'll, you'll have to entertain me for a moment on this presumed shared knowledge of how goblins get drawn and but you know how they're all like thick short stacks, right? That was the vibe that I got because in the image, the girl that's shown has super thick legs and has like tits and a belly. So that's just the vibe I got. But now knowing that the artist is a lolicon, which I have been roundly reminded of, obviously knowing that it was intended to be a lolly drawing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but none of these images look like goblins or even women. Those are little girls. And the fact that Vosh can differentiate between a drawing of a woman and a drawing of a little girl is extremely disturbing to see. Back to the horse stuff, someone in chat would say that people don't like bestiality, 
and Voss should reply by only cracking jokes about the images found on his computer and inserting his wishes to be a horse. I don't know, Vosh. Blatant bestiality isn't really something most people are okay with, regardless of why you like it. Hey, first of all, drawn, not only, not even drawn, AI generated, didn't even show the good horse cock when I saved the image to the thing, I swear. Um, I, to be honest, I guess I just, I, I, I don't care about what other people have to say about the whole, I think it'd be hot to f a chick as a horse thing. It sounds weird to say out loud. To me, in my mind, it's just like, yeah, obviously, you're a horse. Like, rad, you're a horse, dude. I don't really care what other people's assessment of that is, to be honest. It doesn't really mean anything to me. The rest of the stream wasn't of too much importance, with Vosh mainly just trying to clarify things now that Ethan and Hila Klein brought a lot more people to this brand new controversy of his. Ethan would reply on Instagram saying that he invited Vosh onto the show, but that he declined and says he doesn't trust him to be partial, and then says that Vosh invited him onto his stream, but he took that back as well. Vasha posted in his Discord server that he talked to him in DMs and he came off sounding like a snake, saying that everything will continue as normal on the channel, and then says that he rescinded Ethan's invite because he felt he acted in bad faith and didn't want to deal with any of that. There's also this whole side plot involving Lolcow Tipster and Mega Lolcow Keffels inserting themselves into the drama to defend Vosh, and while it's entertaining in its own right, they deserve their own deep dives at a later date, so we'll get there when we get there. Ethan and Hila will dedicate an entire podcast episode of Vosh next, a whole 4 hour dive into more of his past alongside the new developments. While most of the episode is spent covering Tipster and Keffel's defending him, some of the new stuff included Vosh talking about Midna recently, a character from the game Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. However, in that leaked message he specifically mentions how he was into the chubby short stack look when talking about Midna growing up. It turns out that Vosh wasn't referencing the adult Midna in the game, but actually this version of her right here. One where she looks suspiciously young and small, which doesn't really help out his case at all. Vosh would go on to say that he believes Ethan was smearing him to his millions of fans worldwide, and goes on to defend himself stating that he was so caught up in his goon sesh that he wasn't even doing the due diligence to check if what he was consuming and downloading was disturbing or not, showing just how goon brain this man gets when he consumes NSFW content online. He then tries to downplay it as if this was all well known about him already, which given how the internet has been reacting to this news, it most certainly was not. Ethan would also leak DMs at Vosh during the stream as well, such as this one right on screen, but they're not exactly the most interesting as it's mainly just Vosh stating he believes Ethan is being bad faith in line, and Ethan saying that Vosh is sick in the head for trying to justify having a lolly and the horse stuff downloaded on his computer. While there isn't much in the rest of the stream that we haven't seen already, there's one part where they react to Vosh stating that it's election season as a way to deflect from dealing with what he calls petty drama being stirred up by the H3 gang. But also because it's an election year, you know, all hands <laughs> on deck. It Bro, is going you to get. Dumb. We don't want your hands on deck. It is bad, you know. This is not the time that I want to be doing this kind of petty drama, circular firing squad bullshit. Dude, you are such a f loser. It was pretty obvious by this point that H3 and the rest of the internet were going hard on Vosh and were not going to let up, and understandably so. Those images seen on his photo were nothing short of absolutely disgusting, and his attempts to downplay and try and skirt by that ever-growing story were not working. Hell, even Chris Hansen had his own thing to say about the mess, showing just how far the situation had grown. Hello, Vosh. You have to cool it with the horse stuff, pal. Look, I get it, we all have to push boundaries sometimes, but there are lines, and horses, well, that crosses one of my lines. Vosh, I'm not saying this to attack you, I'm just worried about you, please. No more. I'll be watching. Eventually, after seeing his attempts to avoid the situation have failed, Vosh had announced that he was going to work on a response video to quell the crowds and tell his side of the story to set things straight once and for all. Nobody had a timetable for when it was going to be released, and so people would sit back and wait to see what he had to say for himself. On February 18th, 2024, Vosh would release his response video, an hour and 40 minute dive defending himself for what he's done in the past. The first 40 minutes is basically Vosh giving some more context to the older clips, saying that he used to be an abrasive and provocative debate bro and use CP and CP crimes to get people's attentions, but after realizing how insane he sounded after his vegan gains debate, he stopped that because it made him look extremely gross and stupid. It was meant to be like an invective, like something like, ah, uh, it gets, it's insane to me that I needed that kind of external confirmation to understand how bad it looked, how bad the argument was. I have a very low opinion of the me in a lot of these older clips. It just makes me look stupid. I really didn't do myself any favors in that regard, and I've been dealing with the social consequences of them for the better part of five years now, you know, of my poor rhetoric. That part where Vosh talks about that one clip of him saying that everyone has accidentally looked at young images was interesting, however, as it's the only clip he doesn't provide any further context to, as he states he was just joking around when making that statement. Some of these girls looked pretty young. 
you know, this one definitely sounds rougher than the last two clips, uh, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's a bit, it's a joke, a bad joke. I can explain it. I, I don't think that'll make it any funnier. I, 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 I don't really know how anyone could get like a serious vibe from that. Like there's any kind of like, you know, grave point being made. Again, it's not a funny joke at all. I mean, I cringe looking at it. It's great evidence against me if the point that people are trying to make is that I was or indeed still am cringe. This was interesting because he indeed sounded dead serious when he said that, and for this to be the only clip he doesn't provide any further context to and writes off as a joke, it certainly felt odd when getting to this part of the video. Vosh should then break down that clip where it sounded like he was advocating for relationships between a child and adult by stating it's possible for a positive one to exist, and as expected he shows how he's still against it from happening. However, he never actually clarifies if he still believes it's possible for that kind of relationship to exist, which is very concerning as it's extremely disgusting to believe that to begin with, and seeing that he never follows up on that belief now that he's talking about it again is strange. The video started off fine, as while it's debatable if you truly believe Vosh is just being edgy in those old video clips or not, him brushing off one of the worst clips as a joke and not talking about an extremely disturbing belief despite it being vital to the discourse to begin with was really weird. However, the next section is when he finally brings up the Discord screenshots, and when taking it apart piece by piece, things suddenly go from weird to suspicious pretty quickly. Vosh should say that he doesn't stand by his statement of lowering the age of consent in socialism anymore and piles it onto his old debate bro mindset he used to have, so that's something I guess. However, in that screenshot where Vosh said that it was unironically hot for a minor to do an adult, he says he was just joking around when replying. Basically, here I'm doing that thing that guys do where, uh, you know, a hot female teacher will be arrested for a student and the guys in the facebook comment section will be like uh you know where was she when i was that age could have used me some of that and 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 basically like the thing they do where they downplay and trivialize the sexual abuses of the teacher because they personally think it would have been cool if they could have slept with their hot teachers back when they were 14. also despite this being the section of the video where he talks about his discord screenshots not once does he bring up any of the bestiality ones that a lot of people know very well about, and given those are much worse than the ones he showed in the video, it was pretty obvious that he was avoiding the topic because he knows that even showing them is an extremely gross look, and that he was trying to feed his audience a certain narrative for them to follow. Vosh would finally get to the folder leaks and explain how it all happened to those watching, and his defense is that he didn't get the impression that one of the drawings looked like Lolly. The obvious and predictable, but nonetheless true response from me is that no, I didn't know that, and that must not have been the uh, impression I got from those two drawings, because if I had gotten that impression, then I wouldn't have saved them. What Vosh is saying here is that these two faces in this image did not look childlike enough to him so much that not only when he was scrolling through whatever site he was on, he took a look at the full uncensored picture itself and decided that they fit his category of safe enough artwork to save onto his PC for later sorting. Obviously, given he doesn't show the faces to the audience, they can only take his word that it was much more tamer than the way he explained it, showing him being blatantly manipulative when it came to his coverage on the subject. In fact, not once does Vosh show any screenshots relating to the folder leaks, he instead only talks about it and gives his word, but I'm willing to bet that if he showed the images of what he saw to those watching, he'd have a lot more backlash coming his way. Vosh should then give his defense for why he saved the images in the first place, an explanation that you have to hear for yourselves to truly grasp what we're dealing with here. Uh, I, I'm a size queen. I like big dicks. Yeah, I was looking through drawn like furry or hentai or whatever else. I saw a big well-drawn I thought, cool, and saved the drawings, then never looked at them again, as evidenced by the fact they are in a big dump folder literally called to be sorted. Yes, you heard that right. Vosh was so mesmerized by the massive size of what he was looking at that he couldn't differentiate between NSFW drawings of children or adults. I'm supposed to believe the word of this guy when all he's done so far is manipulate the narrative by not addressing any of the Discord screenshots about his lust for horses. And now I'm supposed to believe that he downloaded Lolly that clearly looks like children because he was just so caught up in his goon sesh. Vosh tries to say he was careless about it and says how in the anime community artwork is always towing the line because of the multiple art styles out there, taking the subject off of him and instead trying to shift it onto anime in general. The fact he's able to acknowledge this is an issue to him, yet continues to go down that path despite knowing the warning sign shows a lack of self-control from himself. And this is made more obvious when he explains how he used to just mass like NSFW images and walk in between classes back when he was in college. You know, I'm running between classes, scrolling on my phone. Uh, I look at an image maybe two or three seconds before I like. If you notice, him mentioning how he would only give himself two or three seconds to examine a picture before he liked it is him trying to softly build a narrative that he's just a reckless guy and to give him the benefit of the doubt. 
It's pretty sneaky, but if you remember, the images that were found on his computer weren't Twitter likes, they were downloaded images, meaning that he was examining the pictures themselves, clicking on either the link to it or blowing it up bigger on Twitter, then going on to download it and then going on to organize it at a later date. That's not just a one step process of liking a picture you happen to scroll upon, that's a total of four steps that Vosh takes right here. Even if we were to give him the benefit of the doubt that he's truly so goon brained he just instantly downloads stuff to examine at a later date, that doesn't make it any better as it shows just how brain rotted he has become when it comes to his consumption of NSFW material. So brain rotted that he can't tell the difference between a drawing of an adult and a drawing of a child. The rest of the video doesn't add anything new to the table, and at the 1 hour 38 minute mark only then does he make any mention of horses, Ton his community to keep making jokes about it because it's entertaining to see. You, you can keep making the uh, the horse jokes, by the way. Everyone loves the horse jokes. Uh, have, have you seen all the people out there in the, the, the drama circles trying to get all serious about them? Fucking jokers, I, I, I tell you. But the horse thing, you know, so, so I, you know, I say I want to be a big horse, the big horse, a big whoop. You know, who doesn't? Everyone does. It's not serious. You know, I, I, I don't give a shit about the horse jokes. Ethan Klein will end up reacting to the apology video a bit. And while he mostly writes it off as nonsensical rambling and Vosh making a response really long to deter people from clicking on it, he does bring up a moment where Vosh clipped the so-called joke he made to make him look slightly better. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Some of these girls looked pretty young. Okay, I don't give a f Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Some of these girls looked pretty young. Yeah, this one. I mean, it does. It does change it a bit, right? That stream can be summed up as Ethan and the gang not buying any of what Vosh is saying and doubling down on their beliefs that he's a foul. Which, given what's come out about the man, I can't necessarily blame anyone for coming to that conclusion. Even though Vosh has lost around 20,000 subscribers since the situation went down, the like to dislike ratio on his response seems to be higher than most people were expecting, and subsequent live streams and videos have all had a good ratio, all things considered. It seems that his core audience is still sticking by him, given how manipulative his response video was, I can't necessarily blame him. He only chose to talk about things that he could defend himself with and refused to talk about anything that would make him look bad, with some moments not even adding context as it would add doubt to his explanations in the video. It was obvious the response was made for his audience and his audience alone, and it seems that he succeeded keeping most around for the future. I decided to wait on producing this video for a while in case any more stuff came out in the future, but it seems things have finally come to a stop. It's obvious that Vosh wants people to be extremely charitable to him after everything that has gone down, but there's one story that I save for last just to really hammer in the type of guy he's like. During the very early days of his career, there was a member of his community named Extreme Dad, someone who was known for some crazy political takes in the community, so much that Vosh even featured him on his channel a handful of times for easy content. He wasn't very liked in the community yet was still around, and around this time he would get caught up in his own little controversy. Back in 2019, Vosh had pointed out in a livestream that a member of his community liked to go around pretending to be a 14 year old to lure out creeps and expose them for everyone to see. We have a person in our Discord server who, occasionally, when they feel as though there might be creepos around, pretends to be 14 to see if they can bait any creepos. Doing God's work, right? This would end up with Extreme Dad himself getting exposed or talking with a decoy. And Vosh's girlfriend at the time, Hyena, was one of the people going around spreading the word to other sub-communities. Except, that's not what happened at all. As the truth is that while the decoy and Extreme Dad did talk a bit, once he was made aware of her age, he immediately told him off and cut off communication by blocking them from that point onwards. Extreme Dad did the responsible and correct thing to do in that situation, yet people already disliked him in those political circles so much that they ran with the story of him talking to a 14 year old to ruin his life. Vosh himself would even mention him in that flamenco video we went over a couple months ago, in which he straight up calls him a about to his audience of thousands both watching the stream and in the video he uploaded on October 19th, 2019. And the next person, Extreme Dad, who is a file has my picture uh, as his profile. That's nice. This isn't even someone over exaggerating a story. This is quite literally lying about a man to thousands of people for one of the most heinous crimes a human can do. On the same day Vosh posted a video, he'd also launch up a live stream, and in the chat Extreme Dad would ask him why he lied about him in the video upload. Vosh would eventually notice him and start to slander him some more, showing him being extremely dishonest to the man in the process. Oh wait, speaking of children. Hey, Extreme Dad, how's your life been going lately? Any bites? That's a lie, Hina. Extreme Dad, when there's smoke, there's fire, and we literally have screen caps of you doing it. Why, why lie to yourself? Extreme Dad, why can't you just come out and say, I'm a proud ephebophile, and I want to absolutely clap some underage cheeks? Should I ban you from this? I don't want you, like, courting any kids here. We have, like, a DM system over this website. How many chicks are you messaging right now? Extreme Dad. I know a few of them that are underage. I'm not giving you their names. 
Vos should actually end up showing only one screenshot where he was lightly flirting with the girl, but notably doesn't show the rest where Extreme Dad says he'd only talk to them on a professional level after suspecting they're underage. The decoy trying to push it still and saying they were 14, and Extreme Dad blocking them after they kept pushing it, showing Vosh being blatantly dishonest and manipulative with the man. Vosh would continue to imply that he's a pal while Extreme Dad defended himself, and while nothing of importance would follow up after this point, there was an interesting clip earlier of Vosh admitting that he knew minors were getting access to NSFW roles in his Discord server because of course he would. Ellie Rogers 12, I know there are kids with the pervert role in my Discord. How could we possibly prevent that knowingly? People from Vosh's community will end up getting Extreme Dad fired from his job after finding out where he worked, and would do the same with the second job because of these false allegations perpetuated by Vosh. After taking a break from the internet, Extreme Dad would reach out to him in 2021 to get him to retract the false allegations he made against him, only for Vosh to say that his community hasn't spoken about him in forever and nobody's directing any hate his way, trying to avoid accountability for lying about him. Since then, his story doesn't really seem to be known on a big level, and that's because it's such a niche story in an even more niche internet circle from almost five years ago now. However, there's a video by Will and his channel that I recommend you watch if you want the entire story, as it goes into much deeper detail than I ever could, going through the multiple things he's dealt with since the lie was perpetuated by Vosh and others. Unless there's more evidence that the public has never seen, Extreme Dad was slandered by Vosh and his community, and Vosh himself more than likely knew he was innocent, yet chose to be a vital piece in line about him and ruining his life simply because he didn't like him. After going through the Extreme Dad story, it only further shows just how bad faith Vosh is. He was part of ruining another man's life all because he didn't like him as far as it looks, and when the man came to him to ask him to set the record straight, he just brushed it off because he has the inability to take accountability for his actions. That was only made more obvious in his response video, only this time his manipulativeness was a lot more easy to catch on to thanks to the dishonest presentation of the Discord messages and the folder leaks. Vosh wants people to be extremely charitable to him yet ruin Extreme Dad's life for something he more than likely knew was false, so to expect people to treat him like he just made a small little mistake is laughable. It seems that Extreme Dad's story is starting to hit bigger internet circles now as YouTuber Willie Mac show would talk about him on his coverage of Vosh, so we'll have to wait and see if it hits Vosh's community or if they'll continue to ignore any outside forces like they're currently doing. There's a couple more video clips that I found of him that I couldn't fit into this video due to the way it was scripted, so I'll just play them out for you now. That which includes Vosh implying that anyone who has Lolly on their computer is normalizing pedophilia, him saying that if you have that on your PC you have deeper issues going on, and him saying that he judges characters based off their looks and not age. I've had a bunch of links thrown at me by people who are, again, very sussy, trying to argue there's not actually a relationship between instances of child predation and, uh, and, and access to, like, lollycon or whatever. I'm not speaking on this through a study you're not aware of. I think it's categorical. I think that the fetishization of youth, to the extent that you're fetishizing the bodies or mentalities of underage people, is categorically harmful. Even if somehow, and I don't know if there's any research indicating this, even if somehow you could find that there is zero correlation between any criminal behavior there at at all. And, uh, you know, the, the widespread consumption of hentai, lolicon, whatever, you know, I still think that uh, it, it, it normalizes quite negative things, you know. The thing that bothers yeah. me is people who pretend there's no relationship whatsoever between, like, drawn lolly sh** and actual attraction to children. There's, of course there's a relationship between those things. Ridiculous to pretend otherwise. Just saw your bosh pit on your Midna Thirst. Bet you call Tastemuki a sussy bait, though. Where's the line drawn with petite women, you friggin' gonk chumba? Well... Tatsumaki is literally lolly. Wait, I'm sorry. We gotta smack some people down. Midna's literally a lolly weirdo. Midna is not a lolly, okay? There's a reason why 98% of people who draw Midna draw her as a thick ass post, 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 post puberty stacked, fat, dumpy imp, okay? I don't, it's not lolly to have like impish proportions. Those aren't the same thing, not even close, okay? Humanity has long, for millions of years, have we dreamed of piercing the veil to the realm of hell and dragging out imps to have levacious relationships with, okay? Tatsumaki, on the other hand, is literally like, what, guys, what if we drew a lolly but made her an adult so it's not a lolly? She's a, lo she's a lolly. She's drawn like a child. Her head is the size of her entire torso. This is, this is from the manga. This isn't like a fan drawing. Her head is literally the size of her entire torso. And she looks like a child. Like, also, the character in question that he calls a lolly clearly looks older than what was found on his computer, so take that however you will. Some people are probably wondering about the whole Poppy situation. I decided not to cover it given it wasn't too relevant to this current story. But if you'd like me to look into it later, just tell me in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, all we can do is wait and see what comes next in Vosh's career. And more importantly, see if this is all there is about the man, or if this is possibly the beginning of what's more to come. 
Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video, and again, make sure to use code LANZA to get in on this great deal as soon as you can.